This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2223, Nine Painless Ways to Trick Yourself into Spending Less by Sarah Von Bargen of yesandyes.org. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Thanks so much for joining me once again. And today's episode is a special occasion because we have a brand new author we're featuring. I'll tell you about Sarah right after the reading. So for now, let's hear from the brand new blog as we start optimizing your life. Nine Painless Ways to Trick Yourself into Spending Less by Sarah Von Bargen of yesandyes.org. Does spending less feel like a long slog of coupon clipping, ramen noodles, and watching everybody have more fun than you on Instagram? Friend, it doesn't have to. Hand to God, I swear by these tricks to spending less that feel completely painless. Like you might not even notice that you're spending less till you get your surprisingly small credit card bill. A giant asterisk. These tricks will absolutely help you buy fewer things you don't need. However, they won't help you get to the root of why you're buying things you don't need in the first place. That's a much bigger endeavor. That said, this is a great place to start, and when you're ready to really actually change your relationship with money, this will help. Nine painless ways to trick yourself into spending less. Number one, unsubscribe from newsletters that tempt you. Do you struggle to resist the siren song of J. Crew's discount codes? Are you constantly adding things to your cart so you can qualify for the free shipping? If you impulse buy things you don't need every time a well-designed newsletter appears in your inbox, opt out. If you don't want to completely abandon your retailers of choice, you can use unroll.me to wrap all your newsletters into one daily digest. You can also unsubscribe from their newsletters, but still follow along on social media so you don't miss anything truly huge. Number two, block yourself from websites where you spend too much. If unsubscribing from newsletters isn't enough to curb your regrettable online purchases, consider blocking yourself from certain websites entirely. Maybe you can't let anthropology.com ever darken your URL bar again. Maybe the problem is eBay or even Amazon. Whatever the site, you can block yourself from it. I like block site for Chrome. Number three, turn off your computer's autocomplete credit card option. It's really easy to buy things when all that's required of us is two mouse clicks. Make it just slightly more difficult by removing your credit card info from your computer. If we can't be bothered to stand up and go get our credit cards, we probably didn't want the item that much to begin with, did we? Number four, order online and pick up at the front of the store. If you go to Target for socks and a lime and emerge $157.65 later, consider their drive-up option. You'll only order what you actually need and won't be lured in by sales racks and pretty end caps. Number five, eat something before you go shopping. You know that tip about not going grocery shopping when you're hungry? Turns out you shouldn't really do any shopping, grocery or otherwise, if you're hungry. Multiple studies have shown that people who shop hungry spend 60 to 70% more than their non-hungry peers. They buy more clothes, electronics, home goods, everything. Being hungry increases our desire to acquire and our brains aren't always great at realizing that our bodies are trying to acquire food, not some bookends shaped like pineapples. I will never stop telling you to keep healthy snacks in your bag, glove compartment, and office. They'll keep you away from the vending machine and probably away from the sales racks. Number six. Give yourself a three-day waiting period. If you're on the fence about a purchase, if you don't emit a low groan of yes when you try it on or hold it, give it a minute. Take a photo of the tags and product info. If it's a boutique or local business, grab their business card. If you still find yourself thinking about it three days later and you can afford it, pull the trigger. If you forget all about it, which you probably will, great more money for things you're not on the fence about. Number seven, put yourself on a cash-only budget. Did you know that we're much slower to spend cash than we are to use our credit cards? 
and we value the things we buy with cash more than the things we put on a card. One of the reasons Bank Boost is so effective is that we all put ourselves on cash only fun budgets for six weeks. That's six weeks of looking in our wallets and knowing exactly how much fun money we have left for the week. Six weeks of feeling the pinch when we have to hand over nine singles for a latte and a muffin because we didn't eat breakfast. A cash cleanse is a great reset. Number eight, put a reminder in your wallet. If most of your spending goes on your credit and debit cards, tuck a reminder in there next to them. My free ebook, How to Stop Buying You Don't Need, comes with a wallet-sized set of questions to ask yourself before buying something. You could print out a wallet-sized photo of something you're saving for, or even customize the image on your debit card to remind you. And number nine, unfollow social media accounts that tempt you to spend. One of the best things I've ever done for my mental health was unfollow accounts that made me feel less than and fill my feed with people who are in my size, age, and tax bracket. No more millionaires staying in luxury hotels. No size two 23-year-olds. If you find yourself feeling shoppy after scrolling Instagram, consider the images you just poured over. Are you feeling called to buy all new furniture after staring at photos posted by professional designers? Do you find yourself shopping for makeup after falling down an eyeliner tutorial YouTube hole? If someone or something is nudging you to buy things you don't need, call them from your feed and replace them with accounts that make you feel great. You just listened to the post titled Nine Painless Ways to Trick Yourself into Spending Less by Sarah Von Bargen of yesandyes.org. And thanks so much to our new contributor, Sarah. A bit about her. Sarah has consulted, strategized, and ghostwritten for hundreds of companies, bloggers, and entrepreneurs. Her clients include fashion labels, authors, life coaches, photographers, restaurants, psychologists, interior designers, and people who wouldn't want you to know they have a ghostwriter. In addition to writing three books and an e-course, her writing has been featured on BuzzFeed, Forbes.com, Lifehacker, Mind Body Green, Glamour, and more. And Pro Blogger named her one of the 15 bloggers to watch in 2013. For more from Sarah, come by yesandyes.org. I think these are great suggestions for creating more friction when it comes to spending. This gives you a fighting chance when it comes to fighting temptation in the moment. When I was first learning to control my spending, I followed a process of asking myself questions before I bought anything. It might sound silly at first, but I think the point is to pause and bring some mindfulness into spending behaviors. When I pause long enough to question my assumptions around what was a necessity, I was often surprised by the answer and delighted by my own creativity in getting my needs met. My thought process went something like this. Do I actually need this thing or is it more of a want? Then I would question if I already had something that could be repurposed or if I could borrow this thing from a friend. If not, I would look into buying it used or do the necessary research to find the best price. Spending money became a much more involved activity than just swiping a credit card like I used to do. And that should do it for today. Thank you for being a subscriber or follower of the show and sharing it with others. It really goes a long way to keep this podcast going. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where optimal life awaits.